I can't be resisted. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 romances on Supernatural. Who the hell are you? I'm the girl that just saved your ass. What was that? What would I do without you? Crash and burn. For this list, we're looking at the love interests who made the most impact during the 15 seasons of the show. We're mainly focusing on the couples who had a genuine emotional bond, but allowing for minor flirtations, short-lived crushes, and or love interests if the connections were memorable or impactful. Which romance tickled your fancy? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Dean and Anna. After being rescued by Sam and Dean, the mysterious Anna remembers her true identity as a fallen angel, longing to feel emotions. She'd given up her angelic grace to be reborn as a human. Loyalty, forgiveness, love. Pain. Chocolate cake. Guilt. Sex. Yeah, you got me there. Dean himself is trying to figure out why he was resurrected from hell by the angels and forms a connection with Anna over their helpless situation. Waiting on orders from an unknowable father I can't begin to understand, so don't tell me that... What is so funny? What? Nothing, sorry, it's just... I can relate. Acknowledging that the angels will kill her, but wanting to feel human a last time, Anna reaches out to Dean. What was that for? Mm. Our last night on Earth. All that. The two share a passionate night where it's clear they want to be together on an emotional level as well. Unfortunately, Anna's eventual goal of killing Sam made Dean her enemy, and her death at Michael's hands ended any chance of reconciliation. Number 9. Sam and Amelia Sam is left alone when Dean is sent to purgatory after killing Dick Roman. With no clue how to find his brother, Sam decides to retire from the hunting life. A chance meeting with the widowed Amelia not only gives him a chance at happiness, but also allows him to cut himself off from the supernatural world as she never learns about his past. Being with Amelia even lets him move on from Dean, as Sam settles down to the closest thing to a normal life he's had in a long time, if ever. Happy birthday! What is this? Never seen a birthday cake before? Sit. Eat. While the revelation of her husband's survival forces him to leave, Amelia promises to choose the younger Winchester brother if Sam is willing to take her. If you stay against everything I believe in, I would be with you. Sadly, Sam goes back to Dean when he returns to Earth, while Amelia becomes the one who got away. Number 8. Sam and Sarah The pursuit of the yellow-eyed demon Azazel makes Sam focus solely on revenge. So romance is not in his plans when he meets Sarah, but an instant connection forms between the two. Well, I'd say it's more Grant Wood than Grandma Moses. But you knew that. You just want to see if I did. Guilty. Despite his reluctance to be involved with another girl soon after his girlfriend Jessica's demise, Sam can't ignore the obvious chemistry he has with the daughter of an art gallery owner. Do you mind if I? No. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got it. Make a wish. Her fierce nature impresses him the most, as Sarah is able to accept the supernatural and assist the boys in their hunt. Because of their strong mutual attraction, Sam and Sarah acknowledge their feelings before he leaves. The impact they have on one another remains for years, with Sam and Sarah reconnecting later on when Crowley tries to take her life. I can't even imagine the things you've been through. But I don't know, you just seem more focused, confident, like, like you know what you want. Tragically, Sarah falls victim to the demon, leaving Sam mourning over what could have been. Hey, 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 can you hear me? Sarah! She's dying, and there's nothing you can do about it. Number seven, Dean and Lisa. 
Dean generally accepts the hunter life, but Lisa stands as proof that he also dreams of settling down. Though she's a former flame, he never forgets Lisa, and even becomes a father figure to her son years after they hooked up. Um, go, go to your, your room. room. She remains on his mind throughout the threat of the apocalypse, and moves in with her after Sam is lost in Lucifer's cage. Even after returning to his life as a hunter, Dean's feelings for Lisa remain the same, and she also finds it difficult to get over him. I get to this place where I'm okay, and then you show up at our door. I keep doing that. Every time I think I'm never going to see you again, I'm trying to get over you. What are you trying to do? Ultimately, his desire to keep Lisa safe is why Dean asks Castiel to remove her memories of their time together. While he does eventually move on, it can't be denied that Lisa is seemingly the only person who could make Dean as happy as he could be when Sam wasn't around. We're okay, so, so that's what's important, right? Number 6. Sam and Ruby Arriving in his life when he's searching for a way to save Dean's soul from hell, Ruby proves her worth by helping Sam time and again. Who the hell are you? I'm the girl that just saved your ass. Well, I just saved yours too. See you around, Sam. Their relationship is taken to the next level when a vulnerable Sam grieves Dean's death, as Ruby, in her new body, is there to comfort him. I'm sorry. Uh, uh. I can't. Sam, you're not alone. Sam grows to see her as someone he can share his feelings with, also drinking her blood to empower himself to face Lilith. They work so well together that it even appears as if Ruby's feelings are genuine. However, she turns out to be working for Lucifer the whole time, breaking poor Sammy's heart. All in all, Sam and Ruby are a perfect example of what happens when the good boy falls for the bad girl. What? Why me? Because... Because it had to be you, Sammy. It always had to be you. Number 5. Sam and Madison Initially believing her to be the target of a werewolf, Sam resolves to protect Madison. Like something out of a romantic comedy, they try to deny their obvious sexual tension in awkward ways, much to Dean's amusement. Let me guess. You're sitting on her couch like a stiff trying to think of something to say. The two are eventually able to act upon their feelings when it seems that Madison is safe, leading things to get pretty wild. It's too good to be true, however, as her werewolf condition doesn't end up being cured by the death of the creature who initially bit her. Madison asks Sam to put her down. I'm a monster. You don't have to be. We can find a way, all right? I can. I'm gonna save you. I tried. I knew you tried. This is all there is left. A tearful Sam honors his lover's last request, but becomes distraught at losing another woman he'd opened himself up to. Madison could have been another shot for Sam at a happy romance, but fate cruelly cuts it short. Just wait here. Number 4. Sam and Eileen from the moment they meet, Sam is taken by Eileen's fierce nature. Empathetic over how Eileen lost her parents, Sam forms an effective partnership with her. Dean, the banshee we're hunting is the same one that killed Eileen's parents. Awesome. All right, what's the plan? Well, we're gonna use the same Celtic spell Aileen used to trap me. They remain friendly with one another for a while, although Sam might be a little smitten, even learning sign language to communicate better with her. Her death seems to end any chance of a potential romance. That is, until Sam finds a way to bring her back to life. Touched by his gesture, Aileen embraces her feelings for him, and the two slowly begin a romance. Why do we do something fun? Yeah. Um... Ideas? I mean, a few. They both serve as each other's confidant and friend, and it's something that even Dean approves of. Eileen, you know, she gets it. She gets us. She gets the life. She's hot. <laughs> Dean. I mean, look, all I'm saying is you, you could do worse. While Chuck's repeated interferences threatened their relationship, Sam finally finds the courage to look past his fears and acknowledges his feelings for Eileen, though that doesn't stop her from leaving. Number 3. Castiel and Meg 
introduced as one of the Winchester's sworn enemies, the demon Meg mellows down once she takes notice of Castiel. Despite not understanding how human attraction works, Castiel shockingly has a lot of affection to give to Meg, and she very much appreciates it. What was that? I learned that from the pizza man. Um, A plus for you. Then, when he's rendered comatose after taking on Sam's memories of hell, Meg is the one who watches over him in the psych ward. Heavily influenced by the care and dedication he shows her after he wakes up, Meg finally turns over a new leaf and becomes one of the good guys. I'm kind of good, which sucks. You're kind of bad, which is actually all manner of hot. It's because of her very feelings for her, Clarence, that she has the courage to face Crowley, which is a fight that leads to her demise. You mean to kill me? and all the demons, you included. <laughs> you had me kill you, Crowley. It ultimately took the touch of this particular angel to redeem this once evil demon. Number two, Sam and Jessica. You never forget your first love, and for Sam, this certainly holds true. Growing up without a home, he finds the person he can have the life he's wanted in Jessica. I'm proud of you, and you're gonna knock him dead on Monday and you're gonna get that full ride. I know it. What would I do without you? Crash and burn. Charmed by her sweet nature, Sam chooses her over his family business because she made him feel loved. Although Jess isn't seen much, an alternate reality later implies she was supposed to be the one for Sam. Her willingness to be a safe place proves to be the foundation of their relationship. The impact she has on the younger Winchester sibling is felt even after her death, with Sam spending all of the first season in grief. I'm dreaming. Oh, well, you're not. What's the difference in here? I miss you so much. The fact that she's still in his thoughts 15 years later signifies just how perfect their romance had been. Dina, I still think about Jessica. I, I, I can't just let that go. No, man, that's not what I'm talking about. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, I know. But, but what I'm saying is that I don't feel free. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions, which as previously mentioned, consist more of the crushes, one-sided feelings, and or short-lived love interests. Dean and Joe, because there was always something special here. Okay. Caesar and Jesse, because when you know, you know. You did it. We did it. Thank you. Dean and Amara, because who doesn't like a dark romance? I can't be resisted. Dean and Cassie, because she was Dean's first love. I didn't mean to hurt you. Well, you did. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Sam and Velma. Add some laughter to your romance, Sammy. Great working with you, Velma. You too, Sam. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Sam and Dean. Like, together together? Yeah. They do know we're brothers, right? Doesn't seem to matter. Oh, come on, that, that's just sick. Okay, we're talking about their literal bromance here, guys, since they're brothers and all. The familial love, <clears throat> wincest, <clears throat> just kidding. Number one, John and Mary. The events of Supernatural are only possible because John and Mary fell in love. Yeah, the, the union of John and Mary Winchester, very big deal upstairs, top priority arrangement. Mm. Are you saying that you fixed up our parents? Well, not me, but yeah. <laughs> oh, it wasn't easy either. Ooh, they couldn't stand each other at first, but when we were done with them, perfect couple. While their match was literally made in heaven, there's no doubt these two are each other's soulmates. represent each other's escape from their unfulfilling lives, with Mary giving up being a hunter for him and John finally getting the family he wanted through their marriage. 
their union is constantly threatened by Azazel, yet John and Mary still manage to make it through. Neither is able to move on without the other, with memories of their romance the only thing that keeps them going in life. My girl. I miss you so damn much. <laughs> Me too. Their eventual reunion, both in life and death, is ultimately worth all the pain. And no matter how many times they're separated, John and Mary find a way back to each other. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Can I see you?